Hello, happy Monday, everyone, and welcome back to another Adobe Live. I'm Sofia. I'm going to be your host today. And we have the wonderful Nicola Napoli with us today. And he's going to show us some of his amazing illustrations. I'm very excited. Welcome to the stream. Thank you, Sofia. Thank you for having me here. And uh, hello, everybody. I'm yes. very excited as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm super excited because um, I already showed it before. I even have one of your designs on a t-shirt. Like, I'm a huge fan of your work. So <laughs> Thank this you. is the highlight of my day. And well, I just want to say a quick, like, hi quickly to everyone we have in the chat. And if you're wondering what chat is she talking about, then you're probably watching on YouTube. You can come over to Behance. We have a chat here. You can ask questions. You can send comments. You can send greetings. Whatever you have on your mind, please let me know. I'm trying to have one eye on the chat and the other eye on the illustrations. But now first, do you want to introduce yourself real quick? Who are you? What do you do? Where do you okay. come from? And what's your work? Okay, in a nutshell. In a so nutshell, just, In a nutshell, yeah. So I'm Nicola. My surname is Napoli, it's easy to remember. Uh, I'm originally from Italy, but I've been living in Berlin in Germany for about 12 years now. And uh, yeah, I work here. I do mostly illustration and visual design. Mm -hmm. I also do different kinds of projects like art direction, um, user interface, but it really depends on the single project. But yeah, illustration is my main passion besides being my, my job. And I'm also very happy that I managed to, to make it also my profession. So um, when it comes to that, I work mostly for like the music industry and for entertainment industry. So I produce like visual content for clubs or for uh, music albums, like album covers and so on. Sometimes I also work for big projects like the Adobe one that I did like some time ago. Yes. And other than that, I also try to save a bit of time to do also some personal projects. So, yeah, I try to join exhibitions from time to time. And uh, as I said, I just enjoy drawing. Um, either it's, it's for work or it's, for, or it's not. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Can you just... Much that's it. Can you show us maybe one of your projects and also ex like two questions after yes. you? Start my mind. First thing, what did you do for Adobe? I mean, I know what you did for Adobe, but can you explain everyone what you made for Adobe this year? Yes, totally. So um, I designed the truck for Adobe for the Munich and Hamburg Pride in collaboration with uh, Nadine Kolod. Uh, Kolod. Oh my God, I'm always so bad with pronouncing it. Kolod, Kolodzi who I say hi to, and yeah. she's a very talented uh, 3D artist. So basically we worked together and we created a filter out of my illustrations that was used for uh, for Instagram. It's also like during the, during the prime months, but I think it's still there, so you can check it out. And um, so, yeah, I provided the uh, illustrations and the designs for, for, the, for the Pride Days. Unfortunately, I'm very bad at updating my my Same. platforms, my website, my social media. So the project is not on my website now. But, but it is on your Instagram if people want exactly. to see it. It's on my they Instagram, can go so check it out. Exactly. So the easiest way to see my projects in the real time is just checking my Instagram. It's the only thing that I try to keep yeah, active. Like same. Every day. I would yeah. love to do the same for everything else, but I really don't find the time. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> it's the same as like updating your computer. I'm like, I'm going to do my website another time. Yes. It's going to be next exactly. week. Snooze, snooze, snooze. So I yeah, completely exactly. understand. Yeah. And so, do you yeah. want to show just one of your projects that we can see on your website real quick? Yes. Just give an idea. Um, maybe, well, I could choose any of them, but let's go for the most recognizable one, which is mm -hmm. probably the one that people show so most like online. This is actually a sort of an old project. I did it like almost 10 years ago. It's mm -hmm. a parody illustration about the infamous line of uh, Bergen. So as you know, it's very complicated to get in and uh, you can really find every kind of people there. So I tried to make a sort of a funny version of it. You can see different kinds of characters, um, really like every kind of person trying to get in. And instead of having a bouncer, we had Cerberus, who is the yeah. like guardian of hell. And instead of bouncing people, it just eats them. 
So um, I don't know, like maybe this is like the the project that people know most about my work. Also, I really like this format. I I actually do it quite often because it's in one image you can have a sort of a story, mm -hmm. and also you can find a lot of like sub stories instead of in, inside the macro the macro one. So yeah. I always try to to use this format also for other things. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is one project. Of course, there are like more, but I guess we had to deal with the limit of time. So if yeah, people want perfect. to see more, you can just visit my website. Yes, of course. <laughs> um, Jim is going to put the website and the Instagram of Nicola just in the chat if you want to check it out. Highly recommend. And I think right now we're just going to jump to Illustrator and you're going to show us one of your art pieces. Yes. So... <laughs> As the title of the session suggests, today we are going to design a fictional animal. As I was telling to Sophia before, I was actually thinking, okay, which kind of animal should I draw? In the beginning, yeah. I wanted to do like a unicorn, or, but then a pegasus. And I said, okay, let's go for a Capricorn. And then I said, okay, let's put a siren, a siren on the top of the Capricorn. <laughs> so I made already a sketch, which is also here. Well, you can't really see it's like too bright, but I scanned it already, so it's in Illustrator. And uh, starting from the initial handmade sketch, we are going through basically my workflow until the final execution, which is of course digital. Mm -hmm. um, since we have one hour, I actually already drew this illustration and prepared the single parts in the different layers on Illustrator. We can still go through the like single steps, but maybe we can just show like a piece of every uh, step and then and then uh, yeah, go on to the next one in order to save a bit of time because otherwise look, drawing the whole thing will take a bit longer than yeah. one hour. Absolutely. Okay. Um, one question I have before you start, um, how do you come up with your ideas and how do you get inspiration for your designs and projects? Mm -hmm. Um, I guess it's a mix of, uh, like sort of like nostalgic things from my childhood mixed with my like daily life. Uh, mm -hmm. for instance, like I'm really passionate about Greek mythology or like, um, my style can, rem can remind a bit some like graphic style of the cartoons I was watching when I was a kid, but also, um, I try to show in a playful way what surrounds me uh, also like in my in my real life i'm also very happy to represent the lgbtq plus community and uh, i really um i think i, I really um, try to show like uh, the, the nice things or like diversity and also the sense of community so that's also why probably this is also why i ended up like working a lot with clubs because also, i think it's also what is what a party is about getting mm -hmm. together, but also feeling special and feeling uh, good, good with ourselves. Yeah. So yeah, I think the macro areas of influence are this, like daily life, party life, as I say, and uh, yeah, and nostalgic uh, memories. Nice. Okay, perfect. Mm. <laughs> okay. Should we start? Yes, please. Okay, cool. So... As I said, I started already producing this sketch uh, by hand. Um, usually whenever I start a new project, I always draw everything by hand first. For me, it's very important to have a physical contact uh, also to, to just like, uh, like just, I don't know, materialize my ideas. And so I always draw by hand. I, according to the time I have, it can be like a rough sketch or a detailed one. If I can, I try to be detailed because then also the digital part is faster in this way. So today I kind of managed to do everything in a sort of a clean sketch. Um, so first premise, of course, this is not a tutorial. I use uh, I use Illustrator in my own way. I don't probably it's not the most effective one, but it's just like the way I do it. It's more about showing my process, then giving a sort of a technical lesson. Um, so starting from the sketch, we're gonna get to the final uh, execution, which maybe I can already show you. It's gonna be this one. So okay. this is Lin it's Photoshop because I added the last touch here, but most of the uh, work is done on Illustrator. So let's switch back to Illustrator for now. 
basically my process is kind of easy. I start from the sketch. I start drawing uh, the solid shapes that compose the, the artwork. And then on the top of it, I draw the outlines. Um, mm -hmm. And then of course you can add small little things that give like the illustration a little extra touch. So I will say the first thing will be, let's start with the shapes. Um, I already organized like the, the single things in uh, layers, but let's create a new layer. And maybe let's call it just, I put an asterisk, so remember this is the test and let's call it solid shapes. Very good. You, okay. you want, like you are good at naming layers. I'm so impressed with everyone that's named uh, layers because I'm like, <laughs> layer one two three unknown one two three. yeah 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 i mean sometimes it, i end up doing that but uh today i try to be to be good and to be like uh, organized let's say yeah. actually there are not even so many layers it's like eight in total okay plus a couple of ones yeah that's doable so basically um we start with the solid shape to do to design solid shapes i always use this tool that is like the paintbrush tool mm -hmm because uh, basically I can just draw by hand again as I was like doing it on paper and I already have some brushes that I set before uh, I always use pretty much the same so one point or two point up to like five points when it's like a very thick line and mostly I use the I set it to pressure because it allows me to give a source of a handmade feeling because the thickness changes according to like the course and so on, but sometimes I also use the uh, fixed one. So mm -hmm. for the shapes, I don't care about the pressure. So let's go for the fixed one. Um, as I said, this is a bit complex to draw in a short time. So maybe I'm going to focus just on the siren. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, let's select a black outline and I start, maybe we start from the face. So what I do now is like, drawing just the external outlines. I don't care about what is inside it because it's not something that I'm gonna, uh, it's something I'm gonna do later, sorry. So maybe, um, yeah. Of course, if you have any questions while I do this, feel free to go for it. So far we have no questions, but I'm gonna say hi to some people in the chat we have here. Doris is here, Sean is here. Um, yes. Christy, so everyone, if you have questions, please let us know. Hi, guys. So, so how long do you usually work on one of your, like, illustrations? Can you, like, average the time that would take you well, to Well, it really depends on many factors. One thing is, like, um, the complexity of the illustration. Sometimes yeah. I work with uh, artworks that they have up to... 30, 40 characters, of course, it takes a while. Yeah. Um, another thing is like if, if I'm doing it for work, like for commercial projects or for myself, of course, if I do something that I want to do, I don't care about spending a bit more time, but if it's work, I have to make it fit in my schedule. Yeah. But I will say most illustrations are doable in maybe a couple of days, above all if it's like one or two characters. Yeah. Yeah. And I have another question. When you were starting with Illustrator and using the program, what was the biggest challenge for you? Um, actually, the biggest challenge was like to, to understand how to do specific things because I was always keeping in mind like some references that I saw also other people doing. And I said, why can't I do this? I couldn't find the right tool. So it's always like a lot of like investigating uh, looking for tutorials, trying out different solutions. Um, yeah, I feel like generally speaking, all Adobe softwares are like, there are so many ways of doing the same thing that each one is to look for the way it feels more comfortable with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah pretty much this maybe, finding new, finding new ways. So I'm trying to do it in a fast way. Of course, ideally I should reproduce exactly the same course that are in the background, but we can also do it a bit more roughly for this, just like to show how it works. 
Do you use Fresco sometimes or do you usually just do Illustrator? Um, no, I mostly use Illustrator and, uh, and uh, Photoshop. Yeah. Um, actually, most of the work is done on Illustrator because it's like also easier because, you know, the file stays, uh, doesn't occupy too much space. It's like say slides. So it's also my computer doesn't melt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> with with Photoshop, it's a bit more complicated when I start playing with uh, like a lot of layers. And uh, of course, if I'm working on uh, big, big sites, uh, files is also even worse. So usually I try to do as much as possible on Illustrator and then I uh, just switch to Photoshop for the last touch. Yeah. So hold on. I'm almost done to you. I think you're very fast, to be honest. That was ah. very <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm trained. This is what I do mostly. Yes. <laughs> Most of my time. <laughs> I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> and how did you um, like Sorry. find your own workflow? How were you just like trying around, like trial and error? And how did you yes. find what works for you? Mm, you mean my my the projects or like mm -hmm. uh, the no the workflow you have in Illustrator like how you organize everything how you paint everything how did you find what works for you did you just try um, things yeah it's always pretty much trial and error yeah mm, yeah um, uh, also like um, I don't know like also if I look back at what I've done in the last few years my work also changes a bit in sense of like graphic style. For instance, before I was like um, giving a lot of like effects. Now I try to do everything in a more clean way, a little more minimal. Yeah. So, I, and this also changes the way I use the, the software, of course. It's always like, I think it's normal also to, to keep changing and try out things. It means that you're not, you're like, you always try to to reach a new level. I think also for you, you you were going to say what I mean. Like if yeah. if we always did the same thing, it would be pretty much boring. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Oh. I have no sure. clue about Illustrator, like a little bit. Um, mm. But when you draw a line and then mm -hmm. it kind of makes it a little bit softer or it makes it more defined. Is that right? Like you draw yes. and then mm -hmm. it makes it like it almost looks like it's Rough. Kind of making it a little bit more round or a little bit more ah, defined. Yes. How does yeah, this yeah, happen? So actually, this is a good question. I wanted to mention that, but I forgot. It depends on the settings. If you click on paintbrush tool, as you mm -hmm. can see, you can choose between accurate and smooth. When mm -hmm. it's accurate, it's very sensitive to the movement of your hand. Okay. So I give you an I make a little example so you can see. So it is like accurate here, and I just designed a line. Then if I select the line, as you can see, uh, there are a lot of anchor points. Yeah. And you can edit it more, let's say more de in detail, but it also gives this, um, the line is not so smooth. It's kind yeah. of shaken. Mm -hmm. So what I do usually is uh, using the, the set, I set it in the middle. So it's like accurate, but also like smooth. Mm -hmm. As you can see, like it's much faster and oh, there are yeah. not so many anchor points and if I had to change a bit the curve is easier yes. and for bigger elements actually for instance if you had to draw the tail of the siren then I switch it to uh, closer to the smoothest version so ah, okay. then it's just easier to edit the curve nice because we mm -hmm. had a, like a uh, Jane had a question about it and I hope I understood that correctly but yeah I think that's, okay. that, that's <laughs> what it was um, so we have like the outlines of the siren uh, let's just turn off the sketch for now. As you can see, you can already see it. Um, it's very rough and like you can see the lines are intersecting each other. So crossing each other. Yeah. I did it intentionally because now I'm going to use this other tool, uh, the shape builder tool. Basically this, uh, tool recognizes, uh, shapes that are like limited by outlines and yeah. just creates, uh, um, just creates a shape. So let me give it a sample. So, if I select all the vectors that I created until now, and then I go to this tool, as you can see, it recognizes the path. So you can basically draw the shape of the hair on the body. 
So I don't care that the, these lines are crossing each other because they're not the final outlines that I'm going to use for the final version of the art code. This is just to compose the shapes. So uh, I just pick up some random colors, let's say red for the hair, I don't know, maybe pink for the body. And uh, yeah, we don't need this for now. And then I select everything again and remove all the uh, outlines that I don't need, like the leftovers of the outlines and also the outlines themselves of the sirens. So basically you can already see that there is the shape of the siren. It's very basic now, there is nothing inside it. But mm -hmm. then starting from this, I can basically check again the sketch. So if I give a bit of transparency to this, um, let's say 50%. Basically, I can keep the sketch always in the background and I can draw mm. the details inside the shape that I just created. Yes. So for now, um, as I said, so this is like the solid shape that I just made. Uh, I just use random colors for now, but what I would recommend to do is um, to use a color palette from the very beginning because it lets you also, it is, it's, good. it's better to do it before because then you have to spend a lot of time changing all the colors and all the outlines that you created so far. So um, basically this is like the final version of all the shapes without using the colors. As you can see here, I have a color palette and I already created a swatch here with all the colors that I'm gonna use. Also making sure that all those swatches are set to global this is very important important because if in a second moment I will I'm gonna change the color for any reason, also the illustration is gonna change accordingly. So you do that to review all the single details of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then basically this is like the final colors that I decided to go for. Not this one, sorry. Oops. Maybe I'm doing. I'm going too fast. Tell me about. It. Tell me. No, it's. <laughs> I don't. I don't so think clear. it's going too fast. I'm. Okay. I think it's super interesting. Okay. No, because my, sometimes I talk in a way that, of course, I assume that people know it, but maybe a lot of people don't know it because it's mostly like <laughs> technical things. If people so, have yeah. questions and don't, if if anyone doesn't understand or if they have any questions, please let us know. Exactly. Yes. So basically, we are already halfway, we have all the solid shapes. And now we are gonna draw the, let's say the minor solid shapes that are basically the features of the character. So in this case, we're gonna draw the mouth and the eyes of the siren and also the mouth and the eyes of the, the Capricorn. So okay. to do this, I'm gonna select again everything and set it to 50% because of course I still need to see the sketch in the background. Yes. And then I'm gonna lock this layer. And uh, let's create a new layer again. And maybe we call it uh, details solid. So I understand it's just there. Again, it's pretty much the same, uh, the same process. I select again the brush tool. Maybe we start with the siren. So, oops, white. I need to have it black and I want it to be 100%. So now, for instance, I, well, I can still use the fixed brush because I don't care about the outlines. It's still about the shapes. So. Also, we have one question in the chat. First of all, someone is sent, Luca is sending greetings from Italy. Which oh, is great. We have hi, some Luca. from Italy. And um, Luca says, I would like to ask Nicola if he has any suggestions for illustrators who are starting out and how to approach or find possible clients or jobs at the beginning. Mm, that's a very good question. Um, so, hi, Luca, first of all. Mm -hmm. I would say it's very complicated because it really depends on many factors. Um, I would say, first of all, you have to make sure to have a style that is like personal and yet also kind of commercial because, of course, mm, the illustrations need to be used for like, like several kinds of uh, projects. So um, I would say 
yeah, just try to promote it as much as possible. Draw for yourself and publish what you do on social media, get visibility. And maybe in the beginning, it's also fine to accept to work for projects, maybe even for like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to say for free, but also for a smaller fee than what you expect, like working a little more to get some pro some some concrete projects in your portfolio because i think that, then it's just like a domino effect once you start doing things you publish them people see your work they reach out they ask for more work so it's like um, then it becomes more smooth but yeah in the beginning it's a bit uh, tough because of course an illustration as every other creative field is like uh, competition is to, is very strong yeah and then also, yeah. yeah so sorry um or interrupted a bit to answer to the question. So basically, um, these are the only uh, features that I have in the siren space. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, use again the tool to create the solid shapes. Where is it? Yeah, yeah. So let's go maybe here. I put some black. Then for the lips, let's use like temporary red. And then of course, Let's use the white for the teeth and for the rest of the eyes. And then again, here it's very dirty, so we can clean it up a bit. I, I do it in a very slow way, but I'm sure that there is like a easier way to deselect what you don't want to have. Yeah, of course, I forgot the teeth the here. <laughs> ah. Oh, no, again. Okay, perfect. And then uh, let's remove the outlines. Oh, yeah, we select this. Oops, sorry. Okay. And and then we can do the same on the coat. Mm -hmm. So let's quickly just design the eye. Yes. And you said that you're always using the same brush. And I always ask yeah. people that do illustration, how do you pick your favorite brush and why is it this one? Uh, I just created very simple ones. It's like one point, two points, five points, mm -hmm. all of them pressure. And then another brush is like fixed without pressure. I try to use always the same ones because sometimes I I have like maybe let's say I have a file with some illustrations and then I had to combine it with another file with other illustrations. And of course, if you had the same brush, the same settings, it's easier to to merge them. Otherwise, maybe one it can happen that maybe I don't know, one character has thicker outlines, another character has like thinner outlines, and it's um it's not so consistent. So but maybe it's just me. Of course, you can use like new brushes every time. But I just try to to have everything organized to simplify the work. Um, so again, uh, we can do we can design the code features. So the eye, and then this. Of course, as I said, the colors are not final. Mm -hmm. I really like uh, the shape of. Uh, uh, goat's eyes. I was in Greece recently and I really, that they, it, it seemed like they're not looking at you, but they actually are. They have this, very <laughs> this, this, they have this very strange shape. So, yeah, let's have a quick overview of what we've done so far. Basically, um, if I set everything again to 100%, so now you can already start seeing uh, like the the illustration coming up. Of course, these are mm -hmm. just temporary temporary colors, but we can give it like the colors that we are using in the illustration. So maybe, I don't know, just picking up some random ones, but I think they work well together. Or maybe we can just use this, it's a bit nicer. And for the siren, I think I have a red for the lips and everything else is black and white, so it should be fine. Um, Okay, then we call, let me think. So this is just a, an example of like the details. I had another layer of 
the solid shapes already, they are a bit more polished and also there are like some extra features here. For instance, uh, I, I have a little bit of an eyelid for the siren. And now that we have all the solid shapes, we can go um, for the outlines, the final outlines that we're going to see in the, in the illustration. So again, let me uh, just put everything in transparency. Uh, mm -hmm. like, Sorry, 50% is okay. And then I lock again the layers. People always think that, uh, you know, drawing is like something super creative, but it's also very technical, at least in my case. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's just create a new layer for the uh, outlines. Mm -hmm. Just to make a little test. So if we keep with the siren. Now we can just like use, no, so now the outlines that I'm gonna use now are the ones that are gonna be visible in the artwork. So I want to make sure to set the right brush, which is like the pressure one. Mm -hmm. And I just start with one point, but I can also go for a thicker one later if needed. So for the nose, I think one is enough. I think you kind of already answered the question, but Sara has a question in the chat. What's your favorite brush you have created? I mm. see the one you're using. <laughs> yes, pretty much the one I'm using. I'm a big fan of this like uh, pressure brush. And I, I always use like small ones because like, you know, whenever you also because usually I, it also depends on the scale of the illustration. If I draw a full size figure, it's always good to have like, like thin brushes. Because otherwise, when you zoom out, it's like it could be like too much having like thick lines. But if yeah. I like an illustration with a face zoom, of course, then I change the brushes according to the scale of the of the, of the illustration, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here, let's add some extra lines. So here, for instance, here is always like uh, one point, but for the high lashes, let's go for two. Oops. Of course, it doesn't have to be super precise. I can also fix it later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Oops, sorry. <laughs> and maybe we also add some freckles because I, I like freckles here. Nice. Yeah. So let's see. Okay, we have a bit of time. So I can maybe keep yes. uh, doing the rest of the body sirens for the, so for whatever is like uh, outlines inside the shapes, of course I design everything like uh, it was in the, in the original sketch. While for the external outlines, we don't need to redesign everything. Like for me, like sometimes it's just like, um, okay to do like a, a part of it, but we don't need to design an outline that goes all over the face. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a personal choice, of course. Um, but like, for instance, now I, oh my God. For instance, now I don't need to do the whole arm. I can just like stop it here. Mm -hmm. Maybe make sure that it reaches the shape. So this is what this is why I was telling you about. It's important to have like the pen, the brush set to the smooth, like a, enough smoothness because otherwise yes. the outline is very shaken. Yeah. Okay, and I'm 
the back of the arm. Perfect. Yeah. Um, yes. I have another question. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're going to get to the color later, but your work is super colorful, super vibrant. How do you pick colors for your designs? Mm, um, I don't know, actually. I always try to, like, whenever I check my existing work, I notice that I sort of have a color palette that I use pretty much all the time, which is like between purple, tons of like purple, baby pink, like, like some neon colors. I don't know. I really like nocturnal effects. So probably this is like why I, without really thinking about it, I tend to reproduce uh this is nocturnal vibes in, uh, in my illustrations but it depends also like sometimes i change color palette without being aware of it <laughs> so yeah <laughs> but yeah definitely i like every and i also like this sort of like 80s vibes so like all this like neon uh, neon effects that you will see like in these old images of that period yeah okay so we're almost done here yeah, let's just do this for now. Oops. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it just happens. So, you can see a little bit of the breast, but it's like Instagram friendly, otherwise it will be a bit complicated. <laughs> yes, everything uh, we do here has to be YouTube and yeah, Instagram exactly. friendly. I know, I know. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So, let's switch back to 100% transparency. So now you can see already like uh, the shape, like the sign is like almost done. Um, we could leave it just like with black outlines, but uh, in, usually I prefer to uh, give colors to the outlines too, because in this way it's not too, it's not, there is not such, such, such a strong contrast between the outlines and the shapes, and the shapes, sorry. So let me um, block again these layers. Usually my rule is like, uh, according to the to, to the color of the solid shape in the back, the outlines have the same color, but in a darker tone. So for instance, here we have this like salmon pink for the skin and we can just keep the outlines of the skin like a dark, like sort of like dark red. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, let's just do it quickly. In this way, it's like I don't know. It's, I think it's more delicate. It doesn't give like too much contrast. Thank you as well. Uh, I should have grouped the freckles, but I forgot. If you don't mind. Mm. Okay. Thank you as well. Uh, maybe we do this. Do so, you know in the beginning, like when you do the sketch, do you know what kind of colors you want to use later? Or is this more like you figure it out? Um, not really. I start with the uh, with the shapes, like with the, the, the black and white version. Um, maybe if I see an image that I really like in terms of like color combination, I use it as a reference and I try to create a color pa palette based on, uh, on that specific uh, image because I can already see if colors match with each other. Mm. Yeah. Um, so pretty much, yeah, it should be, the outlines should be this like drawn like everywhere here, but of course it will be a long work. So I already made it. We can just <laughs> like use. Magically. Uh, exactly. So let's switch off these two and wait a second. No, oh, wait, wait this. Ah, it's here. Outlines, here we go. So yeah, basically is uh, I gave like outlines, uh, I assigned colors to the outlines according to the part of the illustration. So like dark brown for the goat, dark green for the siren tail, dark red for the skin. And we have pretty much everything covered. The only thing that is still missing in terms of outlines is the fish scales. So basically we should have a pattern here and here as well. Yeah. This might be a little complicated because, of course, this is a 2D image and uh, it's not a 3D shape. And so the software doesn't easily recognize what I want to do. It will understand that this is like a spiral because it's just like a flat shape. So what I've done, I know maybe this is a bit like a 
a maniac thing, but I just created my own grid, which is this. Oh, wow. <laughs> I just like designed it by hand. It's not super complicated. You have to use this other tool. So the curvature tool, I just make a test so you can see how I did it. So starting from here, for instance, I assign like anchor points and the tool is following the curve that I want to give. Of course, I'm, base, I'm basing my curve to the external curve of the siren tail. Yeah. And I had to make sure that, of course, the, the let's say these rectangles are pretty much uh, proportional with each other and uh, keeping the same same uh, the same dimension. Um, it's not super precise, as you can see. Like some a bit like uh, some a bit like more like narrow than others. But it's also fine because I don't want it to be super precise. I actually like the idea of giving some handmade feeling to the illustration instead mm -hmm. of having everything too clean. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I did the same here. And then based on the grid, uh, I selected, let's use another color so you can see it in a better way. Based on this grid, I just like draw by hand, like the single three scales. You can oh show my that God, you... that takes so long, no? It takes a while. If you're fast, like not so long, but the good thing is that it's uh, it's a very... I don't know. It's a sort of an automatic thing. So you don't need to think too much. It's like I put on some music yeah. and I just do it. It can be even a bit relaxed. It's boring, but it's uh, it's also okay sometimes to do things like more automatically. But yeah, it takes a yeah. long time. It's like so meditation. Like, yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pretty much, yes. Mm. Um, so yeah, just to make an example. So this will be how it looks. If I remove the, well, no, I don't want to remove the grid now, but I already did this too. So this is the final effect. Um, I didn't, I didn't use like a strong color for, for the pattern because otherwise it would look too dense. And I wanted, I didn't want to give too much uh, relevance in the illustration. Mm -hmm. And then pretty much this is almost done now. The next thing I will do will be adding some gloss effect to yeah. give a bit of three dimensionality to the artwork. So um, I create another layer and just call it like gloss. Um, let me make sure that everything else is locked. Yes, perfect. So for the gloss, I usually select the brush, the fixed brush, because I don't need, I don't need it to change thickness here. And maybe uh, something a bit thicker, let's say, I don't know, six points. And I just put here and there, like some sort of like reflection effects. This is a nice one, of course, but just to give a bit of like, uh, I like to give this like, let's say plastic vibe to, to the characters. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. How did you do the fading of the colors, like the pink and the tail, like the skin tone and the, like the pink mm -hmm. of her skin and then the tail? How did you do that, that it's like fading from one into the other one? I can show you. So basically in the beginning it was like one color, then mm -hmm. I go to the gradient window. Mm -hmm. And um, you can have three different kinds of gradient, the linear one, the radial one, and the freeform gradient. Mm -hmm. I selected this one. Yeah. So basically, if you click on edit gradient, you, see, you can see that there are like this, like uh, dot, dots here, and each one is like the color that you decide to assign. So here yeah, I put like pink all over the top part and green in the bottom. And I just, you can add other ones. If I do it now, it would be a bit complicated because maybe it's going to be another color. Yeah, it's white. But yeah, yeah just to show you how it works. So mm -hmm. giving like these points, so you can just like uh, modify the color. Nice. It works sometimes. It doesn't work always. But in this case, it was good because I strategically positioned this to make sure that the fade is like following the the shape, the curve of the, of the body, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then... Yeah. Then of course I, I um, when I did it, I was already thinking of like uh, improving the gradient on Photoshop. 
of an illustrator, I think this is the best I can do. So basically, um, yeah. So I keep doing this, uh, oops, no wait, wrong window. Yes. Uh, yes. So basically now that once I have like all the, this like, let's say gloss outlines, I select them all. I can give them a bit of transparency, maybe 50%. And then I will add some blur. Yeah, so it's more like subtitle and it's not like too, too much. Yeah, I forgot this one. So again, 50 and blur. Now this may be a bit less than 12 because it's like, you know, some... And so, yeah, pretty much uh, you can do it all over the, the figures. Uh, I, I have this layer as well. So it's like, this is how it looks in the end. Um, you can also give like a different uh, color to the blow, to the uh, the reflection according to the part that they want to reflect. So I, I, I added a little bit of green for the for the tail, and this is like sort of like light pink for the for the skin. And so this is pretty much the illustrator, like the last type of illustrator. From now on, I basically did this. I exported the file from Illustrator to Photoshop, making sure to export the single layer separately. So if we switch to Photoshop here, okay, I can show you that. So as you can see, basically, again, I like the shades. Um, yeah. Then outlines and uh, the gloss. And uh, here in Photoshop, I just, I didn't do much. I just played a bit with uh, the colors. What I did was like uh, creating layers with single parts of the body or like uh, the places like the tail of the siren or or maybe like part of the capricorn and uh, i created a mask for each of these layers and uh, and then i like played a bit with with uh, the shades inside the shape also using uh, again the brush tool but instead of having like normal one i set it to dissolve which gives me this like uh, sort of like grain effect I can make a little try. Oops. Also, Sean is asking if you sometimes, if you're using different blending modes instead of like when you do the the glossy effect, for example, instead of um, lowering the opacity and then putting blur on it, do you sometimes use blending modes? No, I mostly use uh, the first method, like lowering the opacity and that is some some blur. But as I said, probably there are like better ways to do it. Um, so yeah. I'm I don't think it's this. a better way. It's just different. <laughs> or maybe more efficient to us. A lot yeah. of different, different ways of doing <laughs> things. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't know, like I, as I said, like each one has like its own way to do things. And uh, I just started doing this and it's just easier because I have a sort of a existing workflow and I tend to stick to it. Yes. Whatever, uh, I think whatever works for the person I'm is sorry. the best way to do it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, totally. So here, yeah, exactly. Here, just to show you what I was trying to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm on this layer and I isolated the fewer of the goat. Let's call it this way. So I created a mask and I can just edit uh, the, I can add some like shading efforts. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it's not like plain, there's this like green effort. Uh, so I kind of like giving a bit of texture. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And so I did this uh, everywhere in the drawing, not so much because I also wanted to keep it more like, uh, let's say flat. But still, I, I don't know, just to give a last touch. So pretty much this is the final illustration. Amazing. Ta -da. <laughs> Ta -da! Yeah. And that was so fast. And you were worried that you wouldn't be done on time. Yeah, because I was worried this is the first time ever that I do a live stream. And so of course it's something is perfect. gonna happen. Um, I don't know, the computer is gonna explode. I'm gonna burn the apartment, but no, everything was okay. <laughs> yes, you were so fast and I think it looks amazing. Is oh, there anything you. like 
tips and tricks you can give to people that are using like Illustrator or Photoshop or like anything to do illustrations? Like, were you like, this is something you should maybe try out, maybe do personal challenges or mm. um, try to find inspiration through, I don't know, other artists? Like, yeah. what tips can you give? I would say, like, just I mean, they will maybe they could just have a look at the, um, like an overview of the, you know, the current illustrations, illustrators, pardon, uh, that they like. Maybe collect some samples of the style they like and try to do something like uh, according to the style they would like to have for their own illustrations. So maybe I don't know, pick up uh, an artist that you follow take some images and then try to see okay how can i how can i do these effects and maybe like try to look for tutorials there are so many tutorials also online uh maybe i know at 20 percent of uh, the software you know there are always like so many other things that i, that I could use yeah so like, saying, every said, time i use photoshop i'm like oh my god there's so many other things Yes, and also sometimes I really spend like one day. Doing, for instance, the 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 grid that I that I showed you before it takes yeah. hours. But then I say, okay, maybe there is a way to do it in thirty minutes, and I don't know. So yeah, yes. <laughs> so it's like every time I do a stream, I'm worried that someone's gonna send me a message after being like, you do know that there is a shortcut for this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the other tip: try to look for shortcuts because maybe yes. you're gonna simplify your life. Yes. yes. <laughs> no, because I think a lot of people are struggling sometimes to find their own voice or to find their own style. And um, sure. I think it's really hard to figure that out for yourself. Mm -mm -mm, totally. What do you like? What kind of colors do you like? What kind of designs do you like? What kind of um, just like, um, yeah, what kind of style, what kind of story do you yeah. want to tell, what's important to yeah. you, so. Yeah, plus maybe using software, like complex software can be a bit intimidating, so some people probably feel they have to um, use it like fully, all the, all the options, all the settings, and maybe sometimes it's like, I think it's, it would be always important to keep in mind what your priority is, what you want to design what you want to produce and it doesn't matter if then you don't use uh, all the tools in the best way the most efficient ways maybe you can be also a bit floppy sometimes but the only important thing is the output yeah and you have to be happy with what you do and it has to reflect what the ideas that you have i think pretty yes. much uh, that's the yeah. that's the main thing i think that people should keep in mind yeah so, it's, the, it's the done is better than perfect kind of thing i feel like Sometimes exactly. you just have to do things and you have to do it over and over again to then. Yes, yeah, totally. And then of course, by doing, you also improve uh, um, yeah. like just like with, like with experience. Yeah, for sure. Do you think your style has changed over the years? And if so, how? Yes, definitely. Um, I can show you maybe if we switch back to my website. So this the illustration that I showed before, Mm -hmm. This is from almost 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. If I zoom on it, I don't know, maybe there are some, yeah. You can see that there are like so many layers and effort and patterns and everything as an outline, everything is like some light effort. And with like in the late, in the last years, maybe I try to be more clean. For instance, this is one of the last things I've done. It's pretty mm -hmm. much like everything is flat. There are not so many. Oh, wait, there is a zoom here. There are not so many outlines. Uh, um, so I try to be more essential. Yeah. So I started to think that less is more. I mean, this is still a lot. Yeah. But it depends on, like, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, execution is like less colors. Um, I don't, I didn't add outlines where I didn't need to add outlines. So I try to remove, I think, like, Removing things is even harder than adding, you know, because yeah. to to get essential is like a very, very yeah. complicated thing. No. Yeah, yeah. In the chat, someone's saying that they can hear this illustration. I think so. Like your work, <laughs> you can kind of like feel what is going on. <laughs> you know, Thank you. this actually the the project. Um, this was a very nice project. It's from it's I I made it's a, an album cover for 
this Italian artist Populus, uh, I say hi to. And it's actually the, the name of the album is W, which stands for women. So yeah. basically it's a tribute to female identified artists and singers. And in each track of the album, he was collaborating with a female artist. So this is a sort of a party full of girls or different, uh, different kinds of people like uh, coming together and celebrating life. And you can also spot some famous people here. There's like Grace Jones, yeah. Missy Elliott, Pat uh, Ditto, yeah. Peaches. So like I tried to hide the fem famous female singers in the, in the art. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it looks like a lot of fun. And I love the purple. I know yeah. we talked about the colors quickly, but your purples and pinks are like... <laughs> yeah, talking about the color palettes that I use, yeah. I think this is pretty much the, one of the most uh, updated ones. Yeah, yeah. Doris, <laughs> Doris in the chat says so many details, love the style. So the people in the chat really love your work. Oh, um, thank you. Is there anything you have coming up? Do you want people to go check? Like, where can we find your work? I think we talked about Instagram and your website. Is there anything mm -hmm. people should check out? What do you have coming up in the future? Things like that. Mm, now I'm actually, yes, I have a few things coming up. Not like in the immediate future, but like in next times. Um, as I said, sometimes I don't post everything on the Instagram on my Instagram profile. I post the things that I like to show. Sometimes I also do like much more like boring things or like uh, technical things. So it depends on the period. Sometimes I'm more free to produce new things uh, or to have some cool collaborations. Sometimes I take a little break, but yeah, definitely uh, new things are coming up soon. So yeah, I, as I said, like I'm a bit lazy with uh, the website, uh, Behance, Facebook, but Instagram, I try to, to stick to Instagram to, to have like uh, daily updates. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It's hard work. <laughs> it's so much work. Like I also, I'm not a big fan of like spending the whole time on social media. I try to have a life. So I think one, yes. one social media is enough. Yes, yes, I completely understand. And yeah. okay, I think we have almost like only three more minutes left. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for showing us your work flow Thanks. and your process mm -hmm. and um, this amazing magical creature. Um, <laughs> for everyone, we have two more streams this week. We have one more tomorrow and then on Wednesday. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about how personal projects lead to client work. So if you're just starting out, maybe it's important for you to figure out how you can find clients. And then on Wednesday, we have the three Architeers. So it's going to be illustration again with Tony, Raquel and Julia. So stick around. And um, yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful week. And I hope I'll see you back here soon. Nicola. Grazie mille. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Grazie a te. Thank you so much for having me. It was a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, my pleasure. Have a good day. You too. Enjoy your week. You too. Bye. Bye bye.
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.